listen while I pray, begging thee to watch and keep, and send me quietly to sleep. Watchful Savior, wash away all I've been wrong today. Help me every day to be gentle, gentle, more like thee. Who the fuck is Jessica? Who is Jessica? And how does she tie into the story? Alright, this is what I understood. It. Okay. Here's my take and then we'll discuss. Alright. Jessica and Lynn went to school with him. Lynn was his girlfriend. Jessica and him liked each other. Jessica got molested by the freaky priest who ended up killing her by pushing her down the stairs. That happened over here. Then, magically, after a tragic helicopter crash, his wife Lynn was pregnant no story, no... There's no sense to it. I, I, can't, I can't piece it together. So, the helicopter crashed. They were off on a mission to investigate somebody dead, some dead kid. She somehow got pregnant, nine, mo eight, nine months pregnant, or he was unconscious for nine months. That could have happened. And... She had a baby, which was the Antichrist. Nicolia Gonzalez, thank you. For the follow, welcome. Nicola, sorry. Nicola. Fucking, okay. She was nine months pregnant. Which he didn't know about. Because he's fucking blind as a bat. Okay. Who? <laughs> and a metal key came. Who is she when you say that, Poison? Who is she? That's why they were going to investigate at the start. Yeah, that's why they were going to investigate because somebody esca escaped the cult. Yes. That's why they were there. Okay. Every other kid is dead. Okay, so we're talking about some supernatural shit, right? Because the end of the world happened. Right? So let's put it together. The fat man, he was right. The fat man knew that the baby was the Antichrist. And that's why. So, Immaculate Devil Conception, I guess. Um, that's what we're running with. So, that's why she was pregnant like that. And because he didn't kill the baby immediately, the end of the world happened. And as it was being born, it was pretty much the rapture and everyone was dying because they're all sinners. Who doesn't explain Jessica and where her story... Jessica's childhood friends with him and Lynn. Yeah, but beyond that, how does she play into the story? Why is she there? What impact did Jessica have? Yeah, what impact did she have on, on the underlying story of 30, 40 years in the future when they were... Well, it, I mean, it was at the end. It was the, it was the end of the world. We saw the sun burn and blow up. Totally, 100% would kill the baby. It came out of nowhere, totally would stomp its head. Guaranteed. Okay, let's listen to the, um, let's listen to the, the, hold on. Who was Val? I think Val was the mud lady. I think that was Val. But she didn't die. Why did they spray fucking sprinkles in my face? Make me all dizzy. She's strung up. Some sort of ritual which we don't get to see happens. Right? Then we go ported back to the fucking the high school. 
And then when we're back, that whole thing's gone. What happened there? Fucking who wrote this shit? We're out. I got Jessica out. It was cold, but the snow had just started. We'll find a grown-up and we'll tell him what happened. We'll be okay. It's not my fault. What? I got Jessica out. We're out. I got Jessica out. It was cold, but the snow had just started. We'll find a grown-up and we'll tell him what happened. Loving and hating God is the same thing. Like making and killing children is the same thing. She told me to meet her in the music room. They lived down here. No, not lived. I had to find Lynn. I hoped I hadn't already. Trapped. I was never gonna get out. But now I knew it. At least I'd be there with her. Yeah, I don't think Jessica ties into into the present. Nah. So this is the weird bit, right? He says here that he got her out in the cutscene, which we don't have a record of. We're out. I got Jessica out. It was cold, but the snow had just started. We'll find a grown-up and we'll tell them what happened. We'll be okay. It's not my fault. But how did he get her out? She was already dead. Yeah, Val was the mud woman. Yeah. Lynn is his wife. That's Lynn there. She was the one that gave birth. Lynn gave birth. The priest dies. You didn't have to do anything. You were a child. Nobody could expect anything of you. None of this is my fault. Who's he talking to? You. You didn't have, He's giving it... He's telling his girl? The priest dies. He didn't have to do anything. You were a child. Nobody could expect anything of you. You were a child. Nobody could expect None you. of this is my fault. I don't know. Unless... We're out. I got Jessica out. It was cold, but the snow had just started. We'll find a grown-up, and we'll tell them what happened. We'll be okay. It's not my fault. Unless all of this is some sort of fucking metaphor for when he was a child. And Jessica is Lynn. But he couldn't help her. I, I don't know. She's gonna be okay. You have her. She'll get to grow up. She'll do everything she was born to do. She's gonna be okay. You have her. She'll get to grow up. She'll do everything she was born to do. I'm open to uh, interpretations. If anybody has an interpretation I'd like to share, please share it. Um, I, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. Yeah, he's talk. I, I, I agree. I agree, Poison. He's talking, well, he's saying he got her out. But he didn't get her out. She got killed. She got pushed down the stairs. And this is the other thing. Jessica got her neck broken, being pushed down the stairs by the creepy freaking priest. Right? And... And fucking then, who hung themselves? Because then when we see Jessica again, she's got the bloody rope around it, rope burns. Uh, what are we reading here? Blah, blah, blah. All right, I'm... Uh, Just reading something Gitmo posted me. All right, I'll read this out. Um, the plot. The game will take place in the same universe as Outlast after the events of the Mount Massive Asylum slaughter. So, okay. 
Um, is all, uh, Murkoff is also scheduled to make their appearance. According to the developers, the main setting takes place in a secluded village located somewhere in the canyons of Arizona. Uh, Blake Langerman, a cameraman with his wife, Lynn, traveled to South Arizona to investigate the murder of Jane Doe. The woman was previously found eight months pregnant by the side of the road before co committing suicide in a hospital that she was brought to, according to the facility's record. Due to the desert climate and the region being inaccessible by land vehicles, the two take a chopper to reach their destination, which, en which ends up crashing from unknown complications. Blake wakes up sometime after the Lynn, after, after Lynn nine months, uh, with Lynn, sorry, nowhere in sight. Later, Blake realizes that he's been strangled, strangled, stranded in a village with cult members uh, that believe the end of the time, uh, end of times are upon them. His main goal is to find Lynn and escape from the hostile villagers. The story begins with a voice calling out to Blake and then screaming. Blake is awakened by his wife, Lynn, who says he, um, he was screaming some other woman's name in his sleep. They are in a helicopter and they are inbound to a location where the duo wants to investigate. Blake tells Lynn uh, he was dreaming of Jessica Gray. Here we go. I didn't, did we hear this part at the start? A student they knew from childhood. Lynn stated she hasn't talked about her in ages and then tells Blake they should start making an intro into their piece on Jane Doe. Ah. Ah. Right. So they must have mentioned it, must have missed it at the start or forgot about it. Okay. Uh, they have a small debate on how she died until Lynn decides to reshoot. In the middle of the intro, she a bright flash of light appears in front of the helicopter. The aircraft goes down. Uh, with Blake and Lynn and the pilot screaming for their lives. God, these are pretty long. Fucking hell, okay. I'm going to read it. Got nothing else to do. Blake then wakes up at his old school, which is a Catholic grade school, St. Sybil to be exact. Blake follows a mysterious man until he reaches a set of doors, which then slam onto him. Okay, blah, 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 blah. Ethan lets Blake, yada, yada. Okay. Uh, Capture his wife. Lynn tries to reason with him, but to no avail. After Blake finds Lynn, he's discovered that she, her baby, and her yoke mate, husband, must be killed. Blake is confused as he has no idea Lynn was pregnant, and he wants to talk about whatever happened, but Lynn doesn't want to. Lynn is in great pain, and they momentarily pause. Blake is very concerned for his wife, but the cultists unfortunately catch up to them. Amidst both the struggle, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Yeah. Hold on. Um, okay, Ethan helps Blake. Blake comes out of hiding. Okay, Blake realizes now he has to take the long way to the mines. He leads the way through the skull. Don't worry about that shit. Okay. Lead calls Blake the skull, the skull, the uh, skull messiah and proceeds uh, to crucify him. They crucified him. Blake keeps on moving through the mines. Okay, down in the mines. During a traumatic episode, players finally go back to Blake's past. He seems to be pinned down by Jessica. It is hinted that Jessica wants to kiss him, but Blake doesn't really want to. So she gets off and just wants to hang out with him at the house. They are found by Father Lotramilk. Ludamilk. Ludamilk then takes Jessica and Blake, uh, makes Jessica and Blake come into a class and interrogates them. Uh, and it, uh, blah, blah, it interrogates them and if they were doing something wrong. Jessica pleads Blake to stay which makes uh, Ludamilk more suspicious, and he keeps on uh, shaming Jessica and Blake. Though Blake tries to explain that he was not necessarily being filthy or romantic with Jessica, uh, Ludamilk shames him and tells him to go home. Or B, Jessica tells him to stay. Okay, here we go. Um, when Blake does try to go home, he hears Jessica scream. He sees Ludamilk chasing a running Jessica who is screaming and uh, telling him to leave her alone. Blake runs after them, hoping to help Jessica, but Blake soon comes to a door... To a door, opens it to see a uh, battered and bruised Jessica near a stairway. Ludamilk says that this is not what it looks like. It is implied that Ludamilk had physically assaulted Jessica and may have even molested her throughout the game. Ludamilk's voice sometimes appears as a way to keep Blake silent of what he saw. Traumatized by his experience, Jessica had hanged herself. But her neck looked broken. Didn't it? That's, that's the problem. When she was there on the stairs, she didn't look battered. She looked dead. Which screws the story up. Because if she looked battered and was still alive, 
You'd go, all right, then she hung herself. Hmm. He's also implied that, okay, blah, blah. Throughout the game, yada, yada, yada. Uh, uh, Jessica was also like, hold on. Traumatized by this experience. Hold on. Luda Milk's voice sometimes appeared to keep Blake silent on what he saw. Traumatized by this experience, Jessica had hanged herself. Jessica also liked Blake, but Blake loved Lynn. It is also implied that the demon who chases Blake is a mutilated and ghostly, uh, ghastly version of Ludamilk. And that's what I reckon, because he had many hands, right? Yeah, she must have been alive at the bottom of the stairs, which they didn't do that very well, because it implied she was dead. Correct. Correct, Poison. And that's what he said, I got her out. But remember what I said when the, the beast that chases you through the school with the hands and the tongue? That was Ludamilk. Because he's got many hands and his tongue, he's creepy. And that was him. Okay. Blake wake up, so wakes up and sees the cultists have attacked the heretics and runs. And okay, so that's where we didn't get that scene because. Um, yeah, so it was Val. Val was the, the heretic or whatever. After escape, this is going back a bit. After escaping Val for a bit, Blake keeps on going further, only for some heretic to catch him and drug him. He sees a pregnant Lynn tied up while surrounded by heretics partaking in what appears to be an orgy. Val then uh, straddles Blake, and it is implied by some reviewers that she either molests or rapes him. Yeah. That's right. That's this one here. Uh... We're out. I got Jessica out. It was cold, but the snow had just started. We'll find a grown-up, and we'll tell them what happened. We'll be okay. It's not my fault. It's just weird. The recordings, it's all backwards. What the fuck did they do in this game? Okay, so we cut that scene. We come out of it here. Okay. Um, all right, Blake wakes up to see the cultists have attacked the heretics, and we turn and run. And he runs and finds Lynn. Lynn is pregnant and she's about to give birth and birth. And Blake, though not understanding how this is possible, says he will protect her and the child. Lynn mentions it. It's his. Though Blake earlier in the game stated he hadn't had sex in months. In six, yeah, sex in months. The sun also seems to become like a giant star reaching supernova. As morning is coming and the world seems to be dying, Blake and Lynn keep on moving on to encounter Marta, who was the first witch lady. In the final chase, Marta uh, almost corners them, but then uh, the storm suddenly brings a cross down and empowers her. Tick. Okay. Blake and Lynn go into a church, and Lynn gives birth to a girl and dies. Blake starts crying and cradles a newborn while passing out. When he wakes up, he sees Noth, who chastises him for not killing the Antichrist of off, killing the Antichrist off sooner. Noth does not understand why God is silent with him now, especially when he had perfectly faith he had perfect faith enough to kill his own children. Noth then says that through that though God does not listen does not listens does not listen to dead men, he sure hopes he answers them and slits his own throat. Blake gets out of the out with the infant and sees the town is burned, as well as seeing hundreds of cultists lying down dead. As he keeps on walking, the sun grows imme uh, immensely grows immensely and engulfs him and the land around him. Blake then wakes up as a kid in the school and hears Jessica calling out to him. She finds her and uh, he finds her and she says she will never let him go as she knows he won't let her go. She kneels down in prayer and so does Blake. She starts saying a prayer and the game ends. That's it. So... Okay, so there's no real, there's no real thing, eh? Uh, that's it. So, in essence, okay, the Jessica thing is unrelated, maybe just to, it's unrelated. It, you're right, the, the story is an absolute shambles. The Jessica whole, the whole bit, which almost made sense, in itself it makes sense, but in the overall story, there's no link. There's no linkage between the two. Why he's having flashbacks at this current time? No idea. How Lynn got pregnant? Okay, we're going to call it supernatural. Um, the end of the world was coming. She's had the devil spawn in her. 
she gave birth to the devil spawn. The fat fucking Noth didn't, he was saying, you know, he killed all the devil spawns prior and he was pissed off that Blake didn't kill his devil spawn. Um, tick. And then fucking that's it. So the devil spawn was born. The end of the world happened. That's it. GG, end of the world. True. In New Mexico, shoe salesman Sullivan Noth heard God through the static of evangelical radio programs. Displeased with churches, Noth would be God. Hold on, let me, uh, let me do this properly. Uh, add. Alright, here we go. Outlast 2. Lore in a minute. In New Mexico, shoe salesman Sullivan Noth heard God through the static of evangelical radio programs. Displeased with churches, Noth would be God's new prophet. Communing on a mountaintop, Noth cut out his left eye, then led his people, the testament of the new Ezekiel, to their own town, Temple Gate. Elsewhere, scientist Rudolf Wernick invented a nanite swarm, the wall rider believing a person exposed to enough horror could become host to his perfect new being. Eventually, young patient Billy Hope controlled the swarm while lucid dreaming, but the wall rider slaughtered everyone at Mount Massive Asylum until journalist that Miles Upshur one. pulled the plug on Billy, inadvertently becoming its new host. To cover up, the Murkoff Corporation sent insurance mitigators, Paul Marion and Pauline Glick, to hunt down loose ends. Paul gladly did so, as Murkoff paid for definitely not shady treatments for his daughter's genetic disorder. But soon, informant Simon Peacock gave Paul coordinates in Arizona, claiming experiments at Mount Massive were pebbles in the pond compared to, you guessed it, Temple Gate. You are journalist Blake Langerman. You and your wife Lynn were investigating the death of a pregnant Jane Doe when, naturally, your helicopter crashes. To find your missing wife, you'll have to sneak around Temple Gate's murderous cultists who believe it's the end of days. And they might be right. Have fun. Hmm. All right. GG. That's it. We're done with that. All right. It's me. I'm back. Just checked the Red Barrel's Twitter and they said there will be DSO called Whistle Sucker. <laughs> yeah, that wasn't a very good explanation, but the one I read, it tells the story, but it, the, the story itself doesn't isn't coherent. It's a broken story. It's a stupid story. There's two stories independent which don't really link. Outlast was great. Outlast had a great story. It made sense. It was what you would expect it to be. Okay. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch it out and we're going to play a bit of Battlegrounds to finish it off. This was beautifully disappointing. It was on a 100% disappointing scale. Not only was the story disappointing, which you could almost forgive if the gameplay was awesome. The gameplay was terrible. It was... Um, tedious, it was frustrating, it was annoying, there were, there was one decent jump scare, I think, um, there was maybe one decent jump scare, I think that's it, it re all round sucked, I know you told me, but I still had to see it for myself, so, you know, there's two, two ways to approach it, you could say, the story could suck if the gameplay was good and you'd still let it slide. Um, or you could say the gameplay could suck, but the story was good and you let it slide. This had a shit story and shit gameplay. And it had a fucking $29 price tag, US dollars, 29 US dollar price tag. This game worth $15 tops, 15 bucks. That's it. Piece of shit. It was relatively short, but you know what? Thank God it was short because any more, I'd fucking kill it. He had a thousand opportunities to pick up a shovel. There was so many shovels just laying around in the game, he didn't pick a single one up. What sort of retard doesn't pick up a shovel? It makes no sense. Poorly explained story. The, the story didn't, um, didn't, wasn't coherent. It 
wasn't coherent. What do you mean? Why are we ignoring the fact that it's Monday? The, um, the first Outlast, even Whistleblower, which was a bit over the top, uh, yeah, 10 bucks tops, yeah. It was, it was poor. It was shit. The first Whistleblower, story-wise, was really good. Gameplay was okay, you know? Um, you had a whole bunch more jump scares. You had a whole bunch more chase scenes, which gave you that adrenaline rush. In this game, I think most of the chases were that boring and that annoying. There was no clear way out that you just, I just kept running into him and fighting him and saying, fuck you, just hit me. While you're hitting me, I'll find the way out and then I'll do it again. And I just kept, you know, safe scumming it effectively. Yeah, pick anything up. In the first one, you didn't feel like that because you were in an asylum. There was nothing around. Um, and it didn't feel like you had the opportunity to pick anything up. So it wasn't on your mind. In this one, you walked past the fucking shovel and you go, ooh, grab it. It's right there. There's chains hanging from everywhere. Pick up a chain. Crack somebody in the head. You know? So, all right, that's the end of the rant. I think we're good. Gave it a shot. That's a fair review. That's a fair review. Um, if you disagree with the review, let me know. If anyone